Wait. Wait, did we just... Did we actually go live on time? <laughs> That's got to be a first. That has got to be a first. All right. Let's get straight to it. Uh, tonight's live stream, we're going to be continuing with the Aeronautical Thunderbolts. Um, but maybe something a little bit different. Um, so we're going to give some of these AK weathering pencils a try. So these are, um, as far as I can tell, effectively just like pencils, like our pencils. I never tried using them before. I used them briefly last night, just a little tester. Um, but they're really interesting. So I thought I'd give them a bit of a go on this stream. Um, on the Aeronautica uh, Marauders and Thunderbolts that we were working on previously. So we'll come on to those. So well, let me just get them all sorted out. We'll grab a couple of pencils and we'll get to it. Let's crack open this set. Grab. What should we grab? I think. I haven't tried using the gunmetal one. That might be quite interesting later. So um, let's try. Let's break out uh, this one, which is uh, gunmetal graphite. Don't know if I'll use it yet, to be honest. Uh, this one here, which is called smoke. Sounds like the sort of thing I might want to use. And what else? Is there a sepia? Yeah, there is a sepia. Perfect. Sepia is always a good go-to colour. Uh, here we go. Yeah, sepia. So let's start with those for now. And we'll worry about the rest another day. Let me put them out of the way. Grab one of these. And a bit of cloth and some brushes. So let's just get some brushes on the go. Hey, Primark, how you doing, buddy? I am very well. How are things with you? Other than the fact it's quite warm. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab some brushes and then we'll do some aeronautica. You just turn them back up. Get rid of that. How are you keeping? What are you up to, buddy? Grab that brush and... That one, and that one will do for now. We'll worry about the rest later. There you go. Hey, anybody? Right. So these are the um, aeronautic. Well, these are the marauders. These are obviously not the thunderbolts I was working on previously. These are the Thunderbolts I was working on previously. But I'm going to do something different tonight. We'll, um, we'll crack on with the weather in a bit, I think. So let's start with... Let's start with this guy. Yeah. I'm going to grab some water. So these things are really interesting. I've seen some great results with them in the scale model community, these AK pencils. Um, so I thought I'd give them a whiz on this. So I'm gonna start with the, I'll start with the sepia first of all, and then we'll go on to things like the smoke. But they have a really interesting use. I've no idea how they're made. I mean, I'm assuming they're effectively pigment that is held in some kind of suspension, almost like a wax base, but it's a, it can't be wax because it's dissolvable in water. In fact, you actually use them with water. There's a couple of ways they can be applied. They can apply dry or they can be applied wet. Um, Primark, not bad. Uh, cracking on with the house been every year now, but the end is in sight. Well, that sounds good. Uh, soon having paint studio back and set up that uh, getting, a, getting the old studio on the go is always a good thing. 
focus here we are. So all I've done is I just literally just wetted the end of it. And I'm just making a few initial marks. Just from the front of the leading wing tips, leading edges of the wings down. A bit like you'd do if you were doing um, kind of streaking grime or something. Yeah. What you can also do is you can just add a few little bits and scratches around. I mean, I'm just... I've never used these before, so I'm literally going to be playing with these this evening just to see what, can, what we can achieve with them. So, it may work, it may be not a disaster. Don't know. But it'll be fun finding out. And we can have a little review at the end. And what you can do is you can get a brush and just start effectively um, blending these just like you would if you were using oils or if you're using the, the water-based pigments or the water-based oils which always sounds like a, a kind of an oxymoron to me but and then a bit like before you can just build them up slowly steady I think they probably are Primark I mean for me I think this all they are is a watercolor pencil yeah um, I think AK, AK, as they're quite good at actually, has just identified art materials and gone, we can use that in the scale modeling world, yeah? And so all they've done really is just remarketed it, rebranded it, or rebadged it. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think they're just watercolor pencils. And you can, you know, you can really, really, you don't have to. Um, dampen the brush what you can do as well is you can really dissolve them away and you see like that so I've seen some really nice effects with these I've seen the scale modeling guys particularly have been using them for things like build up of grime and dust and all sorts uh, Gal has put in chat weathering pencils are water based pencils with a 70 centimeter semi grease paint specifically for use to modeling the weathering pencil is a specific Especially formulated with the most suitable basic colors to achieve all the effects in a very simple way. Clearly from the AK website, yeah. Hey, busy, how you doing? Grizzly Adams? Uh, ain't no bears here, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, this is just a COVID beard. This, this is just like, while well, the zombie apocalypse is on, that's all. So even something as scaled as small as 8mm Aeronautica, you can imagine what these would be like in a tank, they'd be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So even something this small, they, I think they bring something to the party, they really do. So we'll keep working away with these. Oh, I haven't done the other wing yet. Anyway. So in many ways they don't do anything different to what oils do. Yeah. And I say oils rather than enamels, and enamels will do this as well. So, I, you know, whether you're using enamel, streaking enamels, whether you're using, um, you know, artist oil paints, or whether you're using these, they all do the same thing. They behave subtly differently. I guess the key thing here is if you don't want to have to, you know, switch out to using mineral spirits, these just use water. So, in, in many ways, I think they're a lot less. Um, they probably put a lot less wear and tear on the paint underneath the model. The other thing I've done here is I'm applying them. I'm not applying them over satin um, varnish. Uh, sorry, I am, but it's a very matte satin. It's, it leans more towards the matte than the um, than the gloss. Uh, seen them in sets. Not look further into them. That might change. Uh, yeah, these. This is um, this is literally the first time been using them so experimentation time for a bit of fun why not so let's park that one grab another one i 
I don't want to be too uniform with them, but I do want to sort of add a little something. Clearly where I want to add some of these marks is from these um, kind of uh, rivet kind of points. some to the nose as well. I'm going to add some chipping to these areas as well, just some classic sponge chipping. But what I wanted to try tonight was adding the, the sort of the, the grime and the streaks underneath the chipping, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive. You sort of think, but hang on, the chipping's all the way through the paintwork and surely the atmospheric effects will be over the top. Yes, but atmospheric effects, particularly in aircraft, build up over time, kind of oil streaks, grease, you know, sort of flight surfaces that, that, that you know, the the debris and the, I say debris, it's, it's kind of more, you know, grease and oil and lubricants and so on that leak out over time and get the airflow pushes them back along the flight surface. Any impact damage, your chips and all that sort of thing from, I don't know, going through sandstorm or whatever, will we'll be, be through the dirt as well, be through that grease as well. So sometimes you want to think the order you put it on might not necessarily be just the painting order. You think, well, if I'm going to be applying impact damage, I might want to apply impact damage through the dirt and through the paint down to the to the, to the the airframe, yeah? Or maybe just the, through the dirt or maybe just through the paint, yeah? And so with that in mind, you don't always want to do the chipping first and put the dirt over the top. The other thing it does as well is it dulls down your chipping quite a lot, which you might not want to do. Uh, every time they fly, new streaks form. Um, right, and, and, and yeah, and so you could also argue that they wash away with, you know, they fly, they go through a storm, whatever. And everything gets washed away, and then new streaks form, you know, over the debris. So, uh, over the, over the chipping rather. So I, I kind of, I guess you just gotta go with what you feel looks right for the model. Don't get too hung up on the science on it. But it's nice to think it through and just sort of try and tell the story you want to tell, even if it isn't sort of factually correct. It's for the first millennium. What's factually correct? <laughs> Uh, we recommend to apply them over a matte surface to obtain the best results. Yeah, that was that was my gut feeling as well. Looking at these, I think looking at how they um, they disperse, you wouldn't want to use these over a gloss surface. Yeah, or even a, a sort of a, a satin. Um, if I was doing oils, I'd do it over satin. I'd want them to be able to move around a bit, but I, I'd also want some kind of grip, some surface adhesion. Whereas these seem to really work well when they've got. Lots of surface adhesion. Quite nice. You obviously build them up, build them up, build them up. I'll do the undersides as well. I'm just, I'm not going to go too mad. I'm just going to add a little bit to each and then we'll see where we are. Move my chair over a bit. I don't know why I was leaning in. Nice bold one there. Let's have a couple coming off the back of these bits. Printer issues have you built there? Which printer is it?
Yeah, if anyone's going to know what kind of streaking grind looks like on aircraft, it would be Busy Builder and chat. Used to work on a Disney Builder. In the US Air Force. You'd say it was F-15s. Sutty deposits here because this is obviously the kind of vent where the engines are. I mean, this brush is barely, barely wet and it's blurring these really nicely. It diffuses these little sort of streaks. What I would say is, I, in many ways, I think these are probably easier to work with, more forgiving than oils. And I thought oils were easy to use, personally. Yeah, they're nice, Cal. They're definitely nice. I gotta say, just on my first impressions, I'm I'm sold on them. I don't know, in all honesty, whether I bought. I think the whole set's worth buying. It's expensive. There's a lot of pencils, mind. Um, if I show you what's sort of in the set, uh, how are we talking about? Thirty-seven. So there's thirty-seven pencils in total. So you can get an idea. It's a pretty big set, including metallics as well. So what do we got? I'm going to go down the list. We have uh, black, rubber, smoke, white, dirty white, olive green, light green, dark green, sand, sepia. Light rust, medium rust, dark rust, and they're the ones I think, and the dark ochre apparently are really, really nice. Vivid orange, light chipping for wood, dark chipping for wood, gun metal graphite. Chipping color, which is probably very similar looking at it to the one I exploded all over my ceiling, a bit like Rhino's side basically. Um, red primer, green blue, dark blue, light blue, dark grey, neutral grey, dust stroke rain marks, concrete marks, earth brown buff, streaking dirt, red, yellow, uh, aluminium or aluminium, uh, gold, dark alum aluminium, <laughs> you get to trigger me now, aluminium, bronze and copper. Fair few, actually. I mean, if actually, if you look at the sort of stuff that they've been doing with them, but AK has really been pushing these. They've they've got some. Um, they've got a really good Facebook group called the AK Weathering Group, uh, and there's been a lot of good content with these on there. But you can see how effectively they use them. So if you don't like the nasty chemicals with using um, enamels or even oils, because oils just get everywhere. Oil, I love oils, but oils are messy to use. I'm, I'll be honest with you. Um, these are kind of nice. And also there are pencils, so they're, <laughs> they're really not difficult to use. A lot of stuff I see sometimes in the, um, particularly in, in painting at the moment, I kind of feel it's a bit of a gimmick. But these genuinely do work very well. And I suspect they aren't anything new, they've just cracked on the fact that watercolour pencils uh, do a really good job for this. Again, if you find it's just getting a little bit too difficult to make the marks, you can just dip it in a little bit of water. What I'm doing just off camera is I'm just getting the excess off the, the, the kind of the tip there, so you just so it's moist, but it's not swimming in it. 
you can, but that's not to say that's not how you might want to use it. So if you were doing, if you really want to pull up dirt and grime like oil deposits or mud deposits or whatever, or sand, then you definitely get these quite wet. You, you deposit a really good amount and then you, I wouldn't say flood the area, but you're very generous with the water um, when you're diffusing it. And obviously depending on the profile of the pencil, depends on the mark you're going to get. So from time to time you want to rotate the angle a little bit. Uh, AK side, one euro per pencil, 37 euros for set plus shipping. That's not bad really, think about it. A euro for a pencil, and it's, they're going to last you quite a while. You know, you're going to get some good mileage out of it. So it's not bad. And obviously you can lay colours over colour, so I'm going to come in a bit and add some smoke to these. I just want to start with sepia just to see what they like, because if there's any colour that's normally forgiving, it's sepia, because it'll work with most things, yeah. I missed a bit in chat about the deluxe set. Deluxe set, 45 quid and upwards, depending on where you go to get them, plus shipping. I think the only difference between the, the kind of the standard sets and the deluxe is I think the deluxe just has the um, metallics in. The one, they do do them in sets, but they've been very, very canny, and what they've done is they've sort of broken out certain groups together, so you've got like a rust set. But some of the colours for doing the really nice rusts and not necessarily in the rust set so it's it's quite sneaky i can't remember the sets are like four or five pencils set but they certainly sell quickly that's for sure i'm gonna tidy this wing up here because i don't necessarily want it Totally brown. Rust dirt metallics, yeah. And it wouldn't surprise me what they start doing is just kind of repackaging them. So they'll do maybe a sci fi, a set for sci fi, or a set for, I don't know a pirate set, you know, for, for ships and timber and all that sort of stuff. Same pencils, they'll just maybe just regroup them a little bit. That wouldn't surprise me. You know, or, or a set for German armour, or a set for, you know, modern military aircraft, or a set for ships. Probably giving them ideas. So these ones have already had a little bit of chipping put on them in a lighter colour.
And a bit to the nose there. I'll obviously do the sides as well. I just want to do the wings first and I'll come back. All I'm doing is exactly the same as I do with oils, I'm just sort of pulling it from the leading edge just back along the wing there. What I do try and do though is, a, there is coming from the sides, so I mean this brush is obviously splayed which is perfect, that's exactly what I want for this. Uh, I don't want to come in with a feather brush or anything but what I'm doing, if you notice, is I'm deliberately coming in kind of at a V almost from this side and then from this side because I do want to contain some or, or retain some of that um, pigment down the middle. I just want to help dissolve it out a little bit, diffuse it a little bit. And just keep working it till you get it, sort of how you like the look of it. And again, remember you're looking at these extremely close, and um, they're only eight millimeter models, or eight mil scale. No, it's not. You try to trick me saying I'm on mute. I'm not on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. I'm not on mute. <laughs> All right, start diffusing these a bit more. I'm going to add a little more water and just let it run down. Don't want to completely obliterate the number there. Maybe we don't. Again, like the nice like oils just using water, you can just keep diluting, diluting, diluting it until it comes back to where you want it. Very, very forgiving. Hey Lupin, uh, yeah, they are suicidal, yeah, AK pencils, absolutely. following up on my usual MO which is if the scale model community has found something really good for the scale model community I am absolutely stealing that <laughs> for uh, wargaming why wouldn't I yeah absolutely so you can just wash them off as well it's great so that's probably worth pointing out um, uh, not so much like oils oils are, are semi-fixed oils just have a long curing time yeah 
unless you're going to go over your model with white spirit again in the future but uh these probably once you've got them where you want um need you know you need to put your top coat on just to seal them all in but that's fine because the top coat at that stage is going to be mad anyway Another one. This one, as you can see, was one I was playing around with last night, but I think I'll add a little bit more. I managed to snag the full set for 32 quid. Oh, good going. Lupu's in the summer house, so we'll be watching the whole show. Summer house. Dude, summer house, really? Really, you, you, you're coming at me with Summer House. I'm in a tiny little box. I've got the fan going. Hopefully it's quiet enough that you can't hear it. The blinds are shut to try and block out any outside noise because I've got the window partially open. I'm melting! <laughs> and you're coming at me with I'm in the Summer House. This is wrong. I mean the greenhouse. <laughs> uh, Lupu's asking, how do the pencils work? Literally, as you just saw me, they're Lupu. Like a pencil. I don't know. So that I think they're like a wax-based um, watercolour pencil. So, or grease, grease-based, I think they described, didn't they, Gal? Um, you scroll, oh, you might not be able to scroll that far back up chat. Um, but yeah, all you do is you can use them dry, you can use them wet. So if you use them dry, they make some lovely nice scratches and marks. Um, as, as in the car, they're nice and soft, so they don't damage the paintwork. If you use them wet, they behave a bit like an oil paint. You can diffuse it, as you just saw I was doing there. So some of these I put on dry, yeah, and just literally just use it like a pencil. Um, others, you just dip it in a bit of water, and just get the, the end of it nice and wet. Remove any excess. Then you can kind of leave behind it a slightly heavier deposit. And then just get your brush and diffuse it. The streaks, but it can do so, so much more. Yeah, I, I'm just doing streaks at the moment, but I've seen it used for like so many different effects. Really good. Very multi purpose. Nice and relaxing to use as well because they're not particularly challenging. It's interesting, so this sort of effect I would have done with an airbrush previously. Um, this is so much easier. No airbrush, no cleaner, no... Oh my god, it's gone exactly where I don't want it to go. Because that's the thing, with an airbrush, once it's, once it's on there, uh, that's it. You know, you're not, you're not getting enough. Switch to some bombers. So these are ones I did last night just to play around with the black very, very quickly. So they've had 24 hours now on the model. I'll be quite interested to see if I can still work it, remove it. Okay. Let's try and remove it completely. Yeah, there you go. 24 hours later. And you can just remove it. That's kind of nice. So it definitely does want sealing in. I would imagine the moisture from your just handling the models, particularly these being gaming models, um, will remove this. Nice. Yeah, suicidal says sealing, it's very necessary, absolutely. Let me take the gun off. I did magnetise these, I think I said on previous stream. The top guns are magnetised. For no other reason than I thought, why not? I haven't bothered with the other ones because I think that's just overkill, but... Um, I have seen people magnetise the, the other guns on the Marauders. They, it's kind of cool. 
I like it as a technical exercise, it's not something I'd do. Other than the Top Gun, because it's just so easy to do. Yeah, I haven't tried using any of the uh, the rust colours yet, apart from just this sepia. Um, but I have heard they are very nice. Lupus saying his strike cruise has arrived. You excited? Have you built it yet? <laughs> I will not be purchasing a strike cruiser or any of the large ships. It's not because I'm not tempted. When uh, Solvi showed me them, uh, I was very, very tempted. Uh, but I have, I have uh, other purchases to take care of. I'd rather, I kind of at this stage, I'd rather invest in the channel a bit more. So um, that's what I've been looking at. Now you will have seen that I've not uploaded Friday stream on YouTube. Uh, it was a train wreck. <laughs> just, there's no polite way of putting it. It was it was really bad. It was so choppy. I went through. I mean, I didn't go through all the footage, but I went through a lot of the footage, uh, and, it, and it was just dropping frames all over the place. So what I thought they had fixed the internet. I knew they hadn't, by the way. Uh, because when the engineer came, we found where the fault was. Um, but Friday, just because it improved, I thought, yeah, we'll give it a go. Um, but no, <laughs> it was dropping a ton of frames. Not touched it beyond checking for checking the parts. It's going to be a long project I work on for ages. Yeah, with a ship that big, Lupu, it's worth taking your time. Ages, Richard. How you doing, buddy? Uh, apparently got suicidal hooked on Titans, which is always good. <laughs> you can never have too many too many little tiny war engines in your life, in my opinion. The nice thing is where you're dissolving these down, diffusing it. And um, you can also use it to kind of add a bit of colour modulation as well. There's, I genuinely think these are going to be a game changer for me, honestly. I know a lot of painters are like hyping them at the moment, um, particularly as they scale model cramp, but they are really, really nice to work with. They're just so chill. Uh, just Richard's just getting set for work. Nice. Just need to sign on a Legio now. Any suggestions? Well, what do you like? I mean, do you like traitors? Do you like loyalists? You know, do you have any particular affiliation? Uh, are there particular colours you like? I might be able to recommend something based on colour. Uh, particular play style. The nice thing about Titanic is, is the Legios are all a little bit different. Even though the war engines are identical, it's the it's the Legio traits that kind of separate them out a little bit. I mean, personally, I just pick one that resonates with it. You either like the background or you like the look of them. And don't worry too much about whether they're loyalists or traitors if you're not particularly bothered about that. Just go with one you like. Go with one you think you're going to really enjoy painting or one you're really going to enjoy gaming with. <laughs> and don't listen to just Richard and Chad. Legio Audax is best Legio and why I have 12 Warhounds waiting. I'm guessing you're waiting for the Ursus Claws, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it totally depends on playstyle and what you like, or just colour scheme. 
I'm not the worst person to ask, you know, which Legio to go with because I like pretty much most of them. I'd say at least 50% of them. I'd say 50% of the Legios that are done at the moment or that they've shown at the moment, I really like and I would probably consider doing definitely a third of them. Uh, some look very hard to paint. Uh, it depends, I like say it depends how you want to do. So Mortis is pretty good. Mortis is basically red and black with a little bit of white. Um, but you can push Mortis really, really far as, it, uh, as you've seen on Bridey Stream. Yeah. Griffonicus, the, the War Griffins, they're good. Um, the grey is nice and simple to do. The markings are really cool. They look great. Brilliant for weathering because they're a nice soft palette of grey and yellow, so they're brilliant for weathering. It's a bit like Kratos, the Godbreakers. Uh, they're probably about the best Legio. If you want to do weathering, <clears throat> Legio Kratos is amazing, but it's a challenging colour to do. Definitely one you want to probably use an airbrush for, but not, not necessarily, you know, um, has to be. Solaria. Um, the Imperial Hunters has a really unique look to them because of that kind of mottled and dappled carapace. But it's not actually as hard to achieve as you might think. I'm going to be doing Legio Solaria probably as the next Legio I do. Um, I just need to figure out how best to do it on stream the way I want to do it. Uh, but yeah, they're not particularly challenging. Go on YouTube, uh, look up on YouTube. Uh, if you're not part of the Facebook group, I, just, I recommend being part of the Titanicus, the AT Facebook group, just for the photos and references. There's some lovely, lovely leisures in there and it'll maybe give you an idea as well. Sponge, yeah. Sponge, uh, as in, uh, literally put them on with sponge. I can't actually get it because the cabinet's locked out at the moment by the camera. Um, but I can show, I can, if you're around Friday, I'll... I'll see if I can uh, show them on Friday stream. Not before anyone gets really triggered and excited. Not Legio Solaria, but I've done a couple of tester pieces of Carapace. But yeah, definitely worth looking at. Um, there's, there's loads on there. So they're nice because they're like a model green and red. So the red, just could go with a nice dark red. There's nothing particularly too challenging about it. Uh, and the green, you can just attack it with a sponge and it will look great. Cheers, Lupu. They is, they is coming on. So I'm just reworking a couple of them. So these are the ones that I just played with really roughly last night. Uh, just as I proved on the other one just a few minutes ago. You can continue to work these 24 hours later. Probably longer than that even. So they are super, super forgiving. This is awful. I'm turning into a total fanboy for AK's weathering pencils at the moment. <laughs> and I love oils. Mm. <laughs> right. Let's switch, switch to the uh, smoke. And then go back to the... The tea bolts. So at the moment, all I put on there is sepia, even though it looks quite dark. So now I'm going to switch to the smoke. And I'm going to start with the dry pencil, and then we'll move on to a wet pencil. See where we go. Or a, or a, or a moistened pencil. So I just want to do some kind of fine lines at the moment, which is why it's worth starting with a dry pencil. I think about this logically, and this is what's a great way to learn is on stream. Uh, for me, I mean. If I'd have used my nails, what I th should have done is started dry and done all the aircraft and then switched to wet pencil, because it's actually quite hard to come back to a dry pencil, even though this, this kind of, in this temperature, the nib does dry really fast anyway, regardless. and then I'll add to these. So I'm going to do it on the nose as well. Even though the nose is black, it's not pure black. So we'll see if adding a little bit of uh, tone from these pencils helps. Maybe a little bit around the engines here. Intakes. Let's see what they're like. Uh, 
And then we'll come back and really mess them up at the back there. to do is use them for some kind of scratch damage, chipping damage, which I was going to do with a sponge, but actually these just work really well. What I should have done perhaps is start oh, fish around trying some of the green colours. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go at it with a pencil just for no other reasons than why not. So this will be quite interesting on this surface here where you've got an edge, or actually better still on that front edge. So maybe just if I go along like that, let's just see what that does. Can we add some sort of nice little scratches and damage the front leading edge? Yeah, we can. So maybe we'll come back with that um, that graphite, gunmetal graphite one. See what that looks like. Gonna have a bit of fun with these tonight, I think. But I do want to start with a kind of less is more approach for now and just add a few marks, see how they go. Yeah, kind of nice. Also, what you can do is go over the sepia. You want to darken the sepia. Add a little bit of black to that as well. Hey, random num num num. How you doing, buddy? A German camo black brown for chips. It's the armor way. Yeah. I did actually, there was a couple of colors I grabbed when I was thinking about doing chipping tonight, so. Um, I grabbed this to sort of chip out the, it's not the colour I used for the aircraft, but it's similar enough that I would use this to chip out maybe some of the paintwork, some of the stripes. Um, but I think I might play around with these pencils for now, maybe add those later on. Um, and then for the light chipping effect, I was going to go with the green grey. And um, very similar to German uniform. So that would have worked just as well. And then on the other aircraft, I'd have gone for more greys. Close scale colour to chip steel you found. Nice. The other thing, of course, these are great for is when you've got your water slides it's starting to really make the water slides disappear into the aircraft, make it part of the paintwork rather than the water slide that sits over the top. This is just another way of doing it. And yeah, I, I could spend, you know, evenings just messing around with the dots on these. I gotta remember that I got the underside to do as well. one for now and then I will moisten the pencil and then we'll go back and then we'll start blending some of these in.
And if you get an ugly mark like that, the nice things about these is it doesn't matter. Because you're going to come back. You're, all you're doing is, in a way, is just placing stuff for the moment. I mean, you know, if the density is roughly where you want it, then um, that's a good thing. Yeah, you don't want to have to go back and sort of completely redo it. But don't get too worried if it isn't exactly as you want it. That's the whole point of refining it. So I like that one there. You know, just start from the sides and just reshaping it just to where I want it. There we go. Almost erase it completely. Just leave a little bit behind just on these edges here. Don't mind that one so much. I'm just soften the leading edge of it a little more. We also don't necessarily want them all the same length, otherwise it looks a little bit too contrite. Resisting the ocean make airplane noises right now. Just putting it out there.
think the other thing that's worth uh, kind of considering is don't pick too many colors. I think there's a danger that with these that you can then end up muddying the model. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, as in, you know, you add too many colors, and I think it just starts to get a little bit confused. I just pick a couple colors, just keep it simple. It's one of the reasons I always, with, with oils, I always thought that burn umber and sepia were probably the two colors everyone should have in their uh, kind of their case. Because you can do anything with them and lamp black. So, you know, black, burn umber, sepia. Pretty much covers, I would say, 80% of the uses you're going to want to use oils for. After that, it really depends, you know, what effect you're trying to achieve. But if you're just doing things like streaking grime, try not to overcomplicate it. If I want them want to have things like sand or something, you know, in all the, the crevices or something, or an oil effect, which is a semi-gloss, or bits of mud or something around tracks, so I'm talking about tanks here, not aircraft, then um, yeah, sure, you're going to go to different ones. But I think when you're just talking about streaking colours, I always think keeping it simple is better. Uh, random num num num. So curious, have I got any plans for channel points, possibly including jelly beans? Uh, what do you mean by possibly including jelly beans? You mean for me to eat jelly beans? No. Uh, it was kind of fun when we did it, you know, last year. Um, but no, I just want to stick to the painting. Uh, and, uh, no gimmicks. But if you mean cha channel points for like stuff, like you know, like um, getting access to things. Then, then yeah, I just no idea how they work yet. Channel points came in or were coming into beta just as I'd stopped streaming. So I haven't literally, I haven't had a chance to really get to grips with them yet. But yeah, if you mean like the spinning the wheel again and eating jelly beans, no. No, we won't be doing that. I'll leave that to the variety streamers, you know. Just gonna stick to painting. That's it. Yeah. Sorry if it disappoints you, but uh I just don't think it adds anything to the channel. Or my health, for that matter. <laughs> right, where were we? Back to... Ah, yeah. These guys. Let's grab a drink, actually. Oh, did you mean something else random? Yeah, no problem, suicidal. Have a great... Uh, Day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Catch you Friday. Oh, not that far then. <laughs> right, back to smoke. There, so I'm going to raise that. side I think.
these are just streaks that we're going to add at the moment. Well, I'm add for specific effects, I'll probably come back. So, for example, if I want to add scorching around the nose, like around the last cannon barrels, um, maybe that's something I can have a look at individually on each aircraft as a uh, kind of as a step in its own right. I'm just going to stick with the kind of the streaking damage. Or damage. It's not really damage. It's just kind of dirt. Saying oil deposits, uh, leaking lubricants, that kind of stuff. It doesn't really matter what they are. The main purpose behind this is just giving the wings, which are a large flat surface, some interest. And it also gives the impression of kind of movement as well. I know this is going to look a bit weird. I'm going to diffuse these right out in a second. That's a bit better. A little more subtle. I think they're a bit too evenly apart, so that's something I'll watch in future. When you create patterns like that, it doesn't. It kind of just doesn't sit right in the mind. It just it just looks a little bit too um, regular. Definitely want to emphasize a bit more these engines. So let's get a bit more black in there. And maybe start with it right at the top here. And then we'll pull it down. So I just want to build this out a bit more. Give it a bit more volume. something to diffuse. That's better. The other reason to really build up the deposits, particularly on these Marauders, is out of all the aircraft, I know you know if you've ever uh, read Double Eagle by Dan Abner, but these are the aircraft that I, I just feel will spend the longest in the air, just going back and forth from the bombing runs and um, from missions. And out of all of them, just this 
The engines in 40k strike me as not exactly clean running. Yeah, they're going to be glitchy. They're going to be dirty. You know, the they're going to be overheating. They're going to fault. They're going to be shot at a lot for one. So I really like the idea that they build up just a massive amount of deposits on these engines. They look like an aircraft that just spends hours getting there and, and back if they're lucky. Yeah. So I really want to just build up these kind of deposits coming out. I'm probably not, yeah, random. I'm probably not running on the best fuel either. Yeah, absolutely right. So I just like the idea of them, but a bit. The Marauders particularly, just a little bit gritty. You know, the Thunderbolts maybe not so much, because the Thunderbolts strike me as more of a sort of, you know, quick alert aircraft. You know, they, they go out on escort duty, so yeah, the Thunderbolts do do escorts and stuff as well. But they, they, they strike me much more of a sort of Alert 5 or QRF type aircraft. They're going to get launched to, you know, basically to intercept inbound raids. Some of it is going to be bomber escort duty, but I just I just think they're interceptors more. They're brawlers. Whereas the Marauders, you know, you just see them in a diamond formation, just all nicely spaced, covering each other. Very much that, that whole Flying Fortress type look and feel to me. Good old Chief Greta. Primark's got it. Chief Greta. Yeah. So maybe one of the reasons I really like these Aeronautic Imperialis aircraft, particularly the Imperial ones, is, you know, I did enjoy Double Eagle. I enjoyed Dan Appen's books a lot anyway, but Double Eagle for me was just such a great book. I'm just softening these marks around the, the exhausts. And I'm just pulling them down. Just to build up those kind of streaking deposits. They'll look a little bit darker at the moment because obviously it's wet. Um, what I find with these pencils is they, uh, they do soften up. And by that I mean that they just get a little bit lighter, like any paint. It dries. I just want to diffuse that a bit more. There we go. Uh, it's a book I'll go back and read over and over. Never get tired of it. Also a big fan of the Apostles, yeah. I've seen a few people paint the Thunderbolts as the Apostles. Um, the only reason I've not done them is, uh, firstly, because loads of people have done it already. But also, I'm just not a fan of the colour scheme. Uh, I'd kind of rather go for the greens and weather those than and go for uh, the Apostles kind of the, the, the cream, the ivory colour. I'll leave that to others to do the Apostles. But as a squadron, oh, yeah, they're brilliant. It's one of the things I like about Dan. He, he's kind of taken a... He's taken a lot of almost classical um, kind of scenarios you know some of it's very world war ii you know the whole as i say daylight raid and stuff some of it's a bit modern yeah and um, with obviously with the whole vector thrust and the viffing and all that but then some of it is so old kind of world war one richthofen the, the officer gentleman corps you know the the flying corps the apostles are a bit like that they're also a bit like the uh is it the 128th from um space above and beyond they remind me a little bit of those as well uh, what was it? The Angry Angels? It was the Something Angels. Hopefully someone in chat will, uh, will remember. Angry Angels, that's right. Thank you, Gal. I knew I, I, knew I could rely on you, Gal, to, to remember who it was. Yeah, the Apostles reminded me straight away of the Angry Angels. Very good, but very arrogant. 
But the whole mindset of just party hard because basically they're probably not going to make it. <laughs> You're a double eagle on you, gal. One twenty seven, thank you. Getting old. Ah, cool. Yeah, I couldn't remember if I'd um if I'd lent you or not. Ah, top up, yeah, it is a really good book. Starting to build up well. All right, so what I might do at this stage is just sort of switch to the undersides. I'm probably not going to spend too much effort on the undersides. They've got some kind of modulation anyway. Um, but if I don't do the undersides, it'll just look a bit weird that it's got it on one side and not the other. So I'll probably just, just do some, some quick and dirty ones, as it were. Make the sepia. <laughs> um, bit of a different recommendation, but if you're interested in fighter combat, One Man's Window by Dennis Barnum is an excellent World War II biography. All right, thank you. Um, maybe I'll look that up, random. I think it was more recently republished with the much worse title, Malt Spitfire Pilot. A little bit, <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit kind of historical record rather than uh, a book to engage you. The old Imperial Arm books on the guard and that navy is a great reference for fighters and bombers. Yeah, I got, I've also got the um, the original Aeronautica Imperialis hardback book as well from um, from Forgeworld. And has some great references in it too. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The Imperial Armour books have some wonderful, wonderful references in there. For the Fighters and Bombers. I, I have got them. Um, that's a really good point, actually, because I, I forgot to go back and look at those. Yeah, the book is a juxtaposition of so many great fighter movies and actual facts. Fact-based events throughout the ages of flight. I can't wait when Dan gets, uh, gets around to uh, book two. Do you, do you know, um, Primark, I'd completely forgotten about Double Eagle Book 2. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, 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 that'll be good. That'll be good. Look forward to it. Dan can't write enough books, in my opinion. <laughs> and I haven't even started on the um, the third trilogy of the uh, Inquisitor yet. I haven't started on the Beckwin trilogy because I want him to do all three before I start. Will that be quadruple eagle? Yeah, probably. Double double. Double double eagle. So these ones I definitely want to do more more dark, so I'll come back with the smoke on those. And um, because it's the Partially because they're right underneath the um, the quad auto cannons there, but also the, the drum feeds of the quad auto cannons. I just imagine just so much smoke coming off them things. I remember a conversation with uh, Will Hayes when uh, I think when he first did the uh, aeronautic size Thunderbolts, and I think Will must have did Will do the original Thunderbolt? Was it Darren Parwood? I can't remember. But I was talking to Will about it mostly because I got the the flipping front wrong. Um, I think I'd done. Do you know, interestingly, I'm pretty sure I did the front exactly like this and did it slightly lower. And he said, no, it was supposed to be the same same angle. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we were talking about the um, the quads 
And he said in his head, the pilot can't see anything. He says when he pulls the trigger, the muzzle flash off the four quad auto cannons just obliterates anything in front of him. Um, I mean, if guns will, but <laughs> literally won't be able to see a thing for just the smoke and muzzle flash. And I just thought, yeah, that, <laughs> that sounds about right. You just imagine the whole aircraft juddering, you know, on those. much the same with the nose, the uh, last cannons as well. I can imagine, you know, the flash off them's quite bright. Maybe not quite as blinding though. Uh, the lightnings of thunderbolts uh, scream out for Cold War RAF color schemes, such as an RAF fighter in bare metal with uh, gloss red tail fin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Um, oh, the other style actually, I think would really suit them as well. Is um, and I did do these uh, originally. I don't know if I've got a. Uh, I often bring this one up on, uh, on stream, um, just as a reference. Let me just see if I can navigate to it. Uh, it was. You will remember which one it was. It was, it was one I put up on Instagram, which was a scheme I did for. Uh, Drops, yeah, Drop Zone Commander. Oh, it's so far back in the day. I'm gonna have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see if I can find it. Um, I'll just keep going, so just bear with, guys. Uh, why is there a picture of a cat? Some poly cat. Um, and a picture of beer. Now I want a beer. Never scroll through your Instagram feed when it's got pictures of beer on it. Uh, there's various Titans. There's a Huey. I haven't seen that Huey in a few years. Um, no. Yes. No. Damn it! No, I thought I had. That's so annoying. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, mm, let's see if I can show. Yeah, there you go. So that one. So down on the bottom right there, that the the sort of digital pattern scheme. So I picked that up. That, the idea for that came off a uh, uh, Su twenty seven. But the reason I liked it was because of kind of the white nose, the red lettering, and then that kind of four tone, three four tone digital greys to black. Um, I thought that would look really good in Imperial Aircraft as well, personally. Um, but that's much more based on sort of a uh, modern Soviet look. Uh, really liked it. I've seen an Eagle done in that colour as well. In fact, actually the pattern I might have seen off an F-15 Eagle. But I thought that might be quite interesting. But for reference, I won't be doing that digital pattern again with airbrush. Oh my god. That was just too much. Oh, thank you, Prim. That was quite a few years ago now. It was more, someone said to me, I bet you can't do a digital camo pattern with an airbrush on like 10 mil. It's like, hold my beer. <laughs> Dumb. I probably, actually, the airbrushing wasn't that hard. The hardest part was working out the order of colours and stencils. And that was the worst. I actually think that completely put me off doing drop fleet. Again, yeah, doesn't matter. Can erase that. My thumb's in the way. That big blob there. Nice thing about these pencils. I'm just gonna 
rush through this bit. I say rush, not, really, not rush as such, just... Don't want to spend as much effort on the underside because nobody's going to see it. But I am going to paint it. <laughs> It's like doing the interior for rhinos, you know? Got to be done. Gonna cover that a little bit there. Uh, let's get rid of that. These ones are going to look dramatic. Hey, Nick Spin. How are you doing? Welcome to the midweek stream. You're doing good. That's good to hear. I'm doing very well, thank you. Now that I have my internet issues sorted. Oh, so happy. <laughs>
When you're posting a picture, I'll get out. What's it? What am I looking at here? Oh, the flanker camera. <clears throat> Yeah, I've seen that one. That's nice as well. The uh, in the blue. I'm gonna bring that up in the stream. Yeah, that was another one of the schemes. That that was another kind of color scheme I was looking at. Um, quite dramatic because of the blues. Now I tell you where that would be really great for. Tau. Now if only they bring out some aircraft for the Tau. That would be a really good scheme to do Tau aircraft in. But I don't think they brought. I, I just yeah. They're not gonna bring any out. I mean, I can't see them ever doing aircraft for town. But if they did, that'd be a really good scheme to do, I reckon. I mean, you'd have to be crazy to do it, you know, but... It'd be an interesting challenge. But thankfully, they didn't brought any town out for uh, Aeronautica, which is good. No, it's not good. I'm sure there are town players who would really like that, but... Uh... As an Imperial player, it doesn't really make any difference to me. A big blue devilfish too. As an Imperial player, it's good for them to bring out tower planes. You need something to shoot down. <laughs> yeah, although what I'm hearing is they're not that... I don't know if they're easy to shoot down, but I'm hearing they're quite... They're quite killy, is what I'm hearing. But that might be just coming from Imperial pilots. <laughs> but I am hearing that tau, the, um, the Tiger Sharks and the Barracudas are quite killy. So, read into that what you may. Because the vital question here actually is what colour should be uh, the little um, uh, landers? Uh, whose name is just completely out of my head? Harvis, the little Harvis lightners. When the lightners come out, we don't want to just do them grey because grey is boring. I was thinking of doing one maybe in a sort of orange and just, just maybe one in either orange and green or an orange and white as a um, like a SARS bird uh, search and rescue. I thought that'd be quite an interesting scheme. The only thing that's putting me off is it's a little bit less 40k and it's a bit too contemporary military. And I don't like going down that route too much. It's one of the reasons I didn't do, I did these in this scheme and I didn't do them in the um, kind of Messerschmitt scheme, the F109 type scheme, which looked gorgeous for Thunderbolts, by the way. Um, but it was just, it was that crossover between like World War II aircraft and uh, 40k. I like the inspiration of them, but I don't necessarily want to follow the palette too much. Because then I think that what you do is you, you associate it. Um, and so you, you lose that kind of, it's 40k fantasy and it becomes more it's a it's a homage to a Messerschmitt. 
And what's more important is you get the kind of idea that, yeah, it's a bit like a Messerschmitt, but it doesn't, that's not what the first thing you think of. first thing you think of is it's a 40k aircraft. Uh, there's a Sea King rescue paint scheme. It's green red. Yeah, green red's not bad actually. So it would be would be not dissimilar to these guys, but a different pattern. But I know the ones you mean, which is a bit more of a bright red. I just I want to do at least one of the Arvis as something different. It's a bit like the Valkyries. Um, when I get around to doing the Vendettas and the Valkyries, I was really really tempted to do a sort of um, kind of either do some special forces black ones or like Inquisition black ones. I don't know. What I don't want to do is just KD and green. Um, KD would be so easy to do because I've got like a gazillion of those little shoulder KD and gate decals, uh, which would fit on the wings beautifully. But I'm just like, nee. And also with most of these aircraft, I kind of want to do them with a 30k slant rather than the 40k slant. Particularly now the lightnings are out, and they're the Voss pattern ones. Which I need to check my... Oh my god, I forgot about that. I need to check my book, actually. I need to check the black books, because it just occurred to me that the Voss Pattern Lightnings might actually be allowed in the Legion list. And if they're allowed in the Legion list, that means they can be done in Legion colours. That's a thought. That is a thought. I know this was be part of Imperial Navy, but still... Lightnings in Legion colours. Mm. But obviously not the Vendettas. Uh, Random says, honestly, I feel black always sounds cooler than it ends up looking. Yeah, I sort of agree with you. Particularly something this scale, that's, that's so small. I mean, uh, the Valkyries and, and the Vendettas are actually quite small compared to the Thunderbolts. Cause Thunderbolts are big-ass aircraft. It's got a massive wingspan. Um, and you're probably right. So there is that as well. Yeah, that one's done. Who's done? That one's done. You're done. Are you done? You're done. And one more. Just that one. You know, do you believe I just had hiccups then? Uh, is there actually shit that's loose and Clark from the uh, film Event Horizon? Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, what colour scheme is that, Gal? What colour scheme is the Lewis and Clark? Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's that. That's actually a really nice palette because that's... That'd be lovely with the weathering on as well. Because that's mostly sort of off-white, grey off-white. But it's got, again, that orange stripe. I actually quite like the, um, is that like a, a blue or green accent as well, like a pinstripe accent? Yeah, yeah, that's a good shout actually. That, that's not a bad shout at all. Go. Uh, I might just take a little snip of that. It's Imgur, isn't it? So I can't, well, let's just try. I have no idea where that ended up, <laughs> but marked it saved. We'll see. Yeah, orange stripe, good find. I reckon Arvis Lightner done in that scheme would be quite cool. And a nice little nod to the um, to Event Horizon as well, that'd be funny. See if anyone gets that reference. Anyone obviously on the stream, you're not allowed to tell them. Not that you would, I don't know why you would. I don't even know why I said that. I mean, like, tell who? Okay. 
Alright, once these are done, what I want to do is then just switch onto that graphite pencil and just give that a try. Cause Just because I haven't. I'm just curious as to what it's like. Could be a disaster. But we'll give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? I ruin a mini, I have to repaint it. Oh yeah, that's quite bad actually. I am liking these pencils. <laughs> Event Horizon, you mean the Warhammer prequel? Oh yes! <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, it's sort of... Not a similar idea. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. That's enough for the underside of these little puppies, I think. Uh, I, hope, I still need to do some more detailing on here, but yeah, I'll get around to it. I need to do the bombs. That's, that's kind of the main bit. Hopefully, as you can see now, I've done the um, missiles. What I did since the last stream, as I said, it is uh, just gave them a wash of the um, uh, um, whatever the white uh, uh, contrast paint is. Uh, is it ast not Astronomicon? Um, something like that. Which is like a sort of kind of grey. Um, and then I just re-highlight it with pure white. And that just brings the missiles out quite nicely. Alright, let me just... Uh, water starting to evaporate. Let me just top it up a little bit. Okay. Okie dokie. So where should we try this trim? I'm gonna try so let's try on one of these aircraft. Let's try on let's try on this fella, because he's got quite a dark finish to him. It's horribly wrong, I can always repaint it black again. Uh I'm just Yeah, let's leave the turrets off those. Let's go back to this guy. So this was the other pencil I dragged out, which is the group gunmetal graphite one. Now I suspect this isn't going to be anywhere near as crazy revolutionary as others. So you can see it, there is a definite metallic flake in there, graphite flake. I'm not going to use it wet, so I'll try it wet. Um, but I just think this would probably go on better for what I want, dry. Which is along the, um, the leading edges of the wings. So this is basically what I do with the graphite pencil. Yeah, so I've shown you this on previous streams, um, doing weathering. Don't diss the good old graphite pencil. So what I'm doing along here is just trying to catch that leading edge and then maybe just that edge along there as well, particularly over the top there. And that just adds enough glint of scratches to show where the um, surface is worn through. So that's quite nice as well. I don't think it's necessarily any better than what I get with a soft graphite pencil, but I guess, you know, it's part of the set uh, and it works exactly the same way. So let's carry on with that then. Now I can obviously make some marks along other leading edges as well. 
it's just nice being able to play around with these just nice and loose. There we go. So hopefully you can see where it's just added that extra little little bazing along there. I'd already started doing it along here just using acrylics anyway. But this but they were more like light grey uh, chips. So this now just adds yet another level of detail to that. So you can go completely crazy with this for something that is, you know, ostensibly a, a, an 8mm tabletop gaming model. Yeah, I like that. Where I got a sharper edge with maybe a pencil, I might be tempted to go back and do these bits along here rather than with a wax one. This one. I say wax, it's not wax, it's like a pigment in grease, isn't it? Pigment in grease. It's like pig in grease. There we go. What's it like doing scratches? Oh, not bad at all, actually. I think that's quite cool. I quite like that. I just realised I missed those bits in. So let's just do those other wing edges. Gonna focus a bit more on the edges here, because I imagine these would get really, really worn along there. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks lovely. Ah, I like that a lot. That is tidy. That is really, really tidy. I'm taking a lot of time over this because I'm in no hurry. But once you kind of got it down how you want it with all of these pencils, I think you could race through, uh, race through an army with these. You just do all of this at the end. Yeah, that is super cool. It's like no different than what I do either with chipping with a graphite pencil. Um, I've also used graphite pigment for this as well. I think I showed that on a previous stream where I use like a, a clay shaper with some graphite pigment and you just rub that on the edge. That's great for tank tracks, by the way. Um, but this is this is equally really nice as well. So where else would be good? I think along here, just in these little vents. Almost, I'm just, almost I am. I'm just rolling it along there. Just so it picks up some kind of down to the uh, almost like down to the airframe. Nice. Alright, now I've decided like that, let's finish the others off. So this makes me want to go and play with the other colours in that box, like the, the bronzes and the coppers. See if I can add some tonality to some of these this damage. For a miniature of this scale, it's crazy the amount of detail I'm getting in here. And this is what we talked about on the last stream as well. When you switch down to a much smaller scale, like 8mm or 6mm or whatever, you have to really ramp up the density of the detailing. Because if you paint it like a 28mm figure, it, it will look all wrong. It will look like a toy. Yeah, I mean, this kind of looks like a toy anyway, I get that. But um, you, you've got to be scale aware. And this is doubly so when you get onto Titans. So you really have to be scale aware. These pencils, I think, are going to be immense when I get back to the Titans, particularly for around about some of the armor plates. I wouldn't necessarily do trim with it. I'll still paint the trim with a brush. But to add those little extra bazings of detail, um, my head is already like racing with ideas for how to use these to tint metallics and add extra, you know, like micro detailing. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, there's, there's so many things you can do with these. I actually thought 
This would be the least useful of the uh, pencils. <laughs> Ironically, it's turned out to be one of the better ones. Not better. They're all they all do different things. But just I mean, I don't know if you can see picked it up on camera, the, the subtle little shifts you can get in that surface. For, for very little effort. Really cool. I should go over these with like a bit of copper as well. That might be interesting. Yeah, those leading wing edges. Really good, really happy with those. Um, not even trying with these at the moment. That is, I'm just looking at the effects you can create. You know, I think if you want to spend your time with them and really refine the marks, um, you can do some pretty amazing stuff. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I gotta say, color me impressed, I'm the same Primark. I'm kind of a little bit taken aback how good they are, actually. Um, for the, you know, for this sort of purpose, um, and I'm just using them dry, it's gonna be, I'm <laughs> looking forward to seeing what I can do, you know, with different wet effects on these. Just realized I need to go back and just soften these out. Um, so let me do that again. One of the really nice things about these is you miss something, forget it, come back a few days later. No issues. Until you put the final coat on, until you varnish it, you can continue working all these. Again, I might just add... I'll let that dry and then I'll add some... Um, I'll add some of those little scratches along the front of this nose as well. But, oh yeah, my goodness, these are these are impressive. Yeah, it could be interesting on things like the engines. Taste okay too. Uh, right, let's move on to the bomber. Bomber could be interesting because it's got all these lovely dark bits around the engines. And obviously these uh, the front turrets, but let's let's start here. Let's start with these kind of cowls over the engine intakes. And so what I'm doing here is I'm dotting it on, as well as kind of scratching it. Oh my word! Yeah, these are these are pretty cool. You can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Yeah, nice. Oh my goodness, I, I have just fallen in love with these pencils. I really have. This so suits my kind of whole approach to painting figures, which is, you know, don't don't lock yourself into one way. Just don't lock yourself into... And none of these are bad. They're all great methods. Don't lock yourself into, like, classic art style. Don't lock yourself into NMM. Don't lock yourself into Games Workshop style, you know? Don't lock yourself into scale model style. Pick the bits that you enjoy painting. The techniques and the methods that you just find fun. And use them the way you want to use them on the models that, you, you know, you want to paint. Um is great don't lock yourself into one particular technique i'm just going around this kind of the edges here of the uh where the gun sits where the turret sits 
I was going to do this properly, what I would do is actually make this dark first of all. But if you just want to go straight through each spare metal, that's kind of cool. Or like along these. <laughs> I'm just rubbing the pencil on them now, I'm not even trying hard. Uh, yeah, and then I could do the gun turret as well, but basically, I mean, you can't even see half it once the turret's back on, but you can have a lot of fun doing all the kind of worn out bits. Oh, so I've done that, done that, done that. So what else? Like on the kind of all these little rivety bits as well, you can pick out a couple of those. Not too many. Just subtle enough to pick up the glint. There you go. Alright, let's do the trailing edges now. On these wings. So as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm just kind of bringing the pencil strokes inwards. So they pick up most of the mark, most of the wax, the oil, the grease, whatever it is, and the pigment is getting deposited on the edges. But it's, you know, it's bringing a few little bits up as well. A bit like what you do with an airbrush, yeah? And then you just get that kind of nice worn out end. And then we'll do the same on the front as well. Maybe around a couple of the rivets. The thing that presses me about this is it requires pretty much zero brush skill. Yeah, and this is the thing that always cracks me up. You look at painting is sometimes a bit hard, and I'm the same. You go, but I don't have the brush control to do that. You may not have the brush control, but I'm pretty confident you'll have the pencil control. And brushes aren't any different. The only difference is the tip, you know, has many more variables because of the hairs, how the hairs perform, how much water you've got, and density of the paint, how the paint flows off the bristle, whether the bristle comes to a point, is it synthetic or natural, whereas this, one variable, pencil stroke, pressure, that's it, that, that's kind of, there is no variable in the tip, well other than how sharp it is, but these are things that you can control. Let me just go around this little bit here, around hatches and things, these would be great for tanks. This is why the scale guys are loving it. Have a couple of scratches across there. Maybe just in here, in those rivets there. They work pretty well. The biggest advantage of these, you can be nice and relaxed with them. Quite loose in their application. And if you want to be precise, you still can. And if you make a mistake, brush, water, it's gone. Don't know how good it would be to get the pigments off these, the metallic ones, but um, I'm not going to try because I've no need to. But, you know, should the issue come up, it will be interesting to see whether these can be erased as easily as the, uh, the other ones. But they're pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Right, how's that T-Bot getting on? Yeah, it's good. Okay, so same. Let's just where I had those dark streaks. Let's just add a couple chips just in there. Yeah, nice. Just on the front.
happy days. All right, let's get him on the base and let's have a look at him. Uh, one we haven't done is done it on the green, so we can do it on the green as well. Might as well for completeness. So this should work nicely with those black nose cones. I was originally going to do some great chipping, and I probably will come back and do some great chipping. But this will work very, very effectively on the black nose cones. Just because of that massive contrast. Black, of course, being like a really lovely canvas for these. But I suspect it's going to work just as effective over the leading edges of the wings. Well, you won't get quite the um, contrast against the black, but you'll still get the same effect. There you go. It's already started to damage up that front leg, that edge. So that's not quite so straight and sharp anymore. It just adds a little more interest. It catches the eye a bit more. Yeah, you can imagine these leading edges might have uh, clattered off a few bits of spalling metal of damaged aircraft you yeah. know and those quads opened up bits of aircraft are going to spall off whoever they're chasing some of those uh some of those bits of debris are going to rattle off the nose and the wings as it flies through the uh debris cloud and let's Add a few little scratches along here for it. There you go. It's a subtle thing, but it makes a big difference. I mean, you were looking at this massively magnified on in the camera. I can go back and obviously do a whole bunch more on that. But so here's another area I can work on is areas where it's just become a little bit damaged. So it's obviously I say damaged. It's obviously picked up a bit of silver paint when I was doing something else. Erased, and a bit more detail added at the same time to the wingtips. Oh, with just a couple of, uh, just a little bit, couple of marks, couple of lines, scratches, whatever, with the pencil. That's it. Let's get that one on the base. There we go. So that is AK's weathering pencils. Three colours used. Um, pretty laid back. Not trying to rush them or anything. Just messing around with them, not trying too hard. And you can get some quite nice effects. So that's with the... Uh, on the wings, that's with smoke. With sepia. And then on the uh, leading edges. And a few areas. That's the graphite. Again, nothing particularly original here. You know, you can use these. You could use graphite pencils for this. You know, you can use oils for the sepia and the smoke effects. Exactly the same. You can use an airbrush. What it is is just another way of doing it. Um, a way of doing it that just adds. You know. Maybe the same effect, but in an easier way. Maybe less chemicals. Maybe you prefer to use pencils rather than an airbrush. 
and maybe just like the effects it gives. I mean, what would be interesting actually is to start combining the two, mix of airbrush and pencil, and be curious to see what you could build up. I probably wouldn't go that far with something this small that's ultimately just a, a gaming piece, yeah? Uh, this isn't, you know, these, these, these are just, you know, for tabletop gaming. But if you're doing maybe scale model, or maybe you're doing, uh, you know, a piece for competition, yeah, it'd be good. It'd definitely be something that's well worth adding to the, the box, I reckon. In my opinion. But give them a go, see what you think. <laughs> Alright, I am gonna have a little look and see who we can raid to. Mocker's arm. Um, who else have we got on? Uh, let me just get rid of that, get rid of that, close that, do that, have one of them. Uh, so always not streaming tonight, he doesn't do Wednesdays, I don't think. Malev's on. I have, oh wow, I haven't seen Malev for absolutely ages. Who else we got on? Tiver is on. Um, let me just make sure that's muted. Uh, yep. Yeah, Malev's on. Um, looks like he's doing. I can't tell what he's doing actually. Relic blade. Might be some relic blade. Okay, I'm gonna. We're gonna raid over to. Um, some love flow, shall we? Uh, he's a cool streamer, actually. I haven't seen him in absolutely ages, but a really good pain. A very, very chill stream. Um, yeah, thank you, next news all way. Now, of course, I just remembered Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, or Sunday, Monday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Mondays, isn't he? I think, for a call. But uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, guys. Um, been an absolute blast. Um, learned some new stuff. Uh, learned how to use. These little puppies. We're definitely going to be using these a lot more in the future, I think, on stream. Um, or just in painting in general. Uh, really, really surprised. I kind of, I kind of knew from watching some of the YouTube vids, of some of the scale model guys, um, and looking at the Facebook posts, that they were getting some amazing results with them. But that's unsurprising. The scale model painters, they, they know how to do this stuff. Um, I wasn't going to use it in quite the same way, but what I want to see is, can you use them quickly to add? Similar effects on tabletop gaming for something as small as Aeronautica, but also, you know, maybe 30k, maybe heresy stuff. And without spending too much effort into it and not having to resort to kind of adding in oils and everything, which is goes against how I normally paint because I love using oils. I love using any of the mucky stuff. Um, but they're nice. They're, they're a really nice alternative. So, you know, guys, I can highly recommend AK's weathering pencils for models. For models. Peace. Don't actually buy the set, but definitely give them a go. Um, okay, I am going to, um, we'll do a raid to my left, so stick around for that, and then I should be back, all being well, Friday. Till then, have a fantastic week.